Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, uh, please consider subscribing if you like stocks and are wondering what a good price to pay for a stock is. Today, we're getting into Liberty Media Corporation. Uh, they own the Formula One group. The Formula One season is underway. Uh, it's exciting, and I wanted to look into Liberty Media and see if there was any sort of value there and how they were doing financially. So... Let's get right into it. The story here is not great. Coming up with a fair value of $40, discounted cash flows, 28 and a half, uh, actual current price, almost $69. It's been as low as 61, as high as uh, 78 and a half. Really, I, I'd be wanting to get into this stock probably somewhere closer to 28 for the fair value. Earnings yield. 0.9% clearly it is an elevated price right now. Uh, they need to be coming in at $3.44 in EPS for their current valuation. And they're expected to come in at $1 this year and $1.38 next year. So they're pretty far off with that. Cash flow yield, kind of low, 6%, a little bit higher than their average of 5.8%. They do not pay a dividend. ROE low at 3%, ROA low at 1.8%, and ROI is negative 1.72%. So they are losing money on their investments. Debt to equity is something that's good here. It's lower than one. So they have some decent assets and not a whole lot of liabilities. Gross margin looks pretty good, 30 and a half. On average, 27. So clearly they're doing better at their gross margin. A net kind of low, 5.75%. Uh, it has been traditionally negative, so they are on a good uptrend with that. Still would like to see it closer to 10%. Revenue, growth, double digits. Uh, going forward, analysts are projecting 15.75 this next year and 11.7 the following year. So we can go 12, maybe even a little bit higher than that for our thesis for the next three to five years. Share count, they do issue a little bit of shares, not a whole lot. So something small decreasing from what it's currently at. I mean, th their debt doesn't seem to be awful but their returns aren't the best. So cash flows, they have been negative. We're going to hold them where they're at. No growth, no loss. Uh, that bring them to 3.4% cash flow yield in five years, which is actually kind of low. You know, if they're raising their revenues at 12%, then we'd want to see 10 to 12% growth here as well but it looks like they are still shoring up some operations. So we'll give them a little bit of leeway there. We can come back and adjust that. Assets, they've been decreasing, uh, picking up in the last two years. So we're going with a midpoint, three and a half percent. We'll see how it actually comes out with earnings. Uh, liabilities, constantly decreasing those around six to six and a half percent. So 6.3 there, no dividend margins, if they can grow that 7% per year in five years, they'd be at 8%. So they'd go from negative 8% to positive 8%, which would be some good progress. Again, I'd like them above 10. And what all of that would give us is 3.04% returns. So nothing crazy here, definitely underperforming the market, which really sucks because they have some nice revenue growth here. But can't be issuing shares, losing assets, and not having any cash flows. Uh, even worse if it's negative like it has been previously. So buying at today's price, you'd be looking at a fair value of around 45 in three years, assuming that this is what happens, and almost 48 in five years. So underperforming the market by 30 to 35% uh, based on this scenario here. Now, if we can adjust those cash flows, get those up, let's go with the 10, 5.5% in five years there. It brings the average return up to 3.9. And you're doing a little bit better. Uh, you gain 2% on the three-year and 
3% on the five year. So you're no longer in underperforming by 30% on five year basis. If they can come in with some asset growth while still decreasing their liabilities at the same rate, even if it's just 1%, something kind of small, that's what they really need. Because all of a sudden, now we're looking at 7.78%, adjust a few other things there. Let's say the share count, they, they don't issue as many shares. Well, now we're looking at some market returns. It, it wouldn't be unreasonable to buy. Uh, at today's prices, still not really a good deal. But, I mean, if you could get in, let's see, if you got in at the low of the last 52 weeks, you're basically buying it at the valuation in five years, assuming that this is the situation. I'd really want to get in below 60. I mean, if you can get in at that fair value, you'd be looking pretty good. You'd be outperforming the market by 3% in both the three and five year basis, uh, which is pretty nice. So I do kind of want to follow this one because I, I am interested in the sport that they own, but if they can turn those assets positive, stop issuing shares and start growing their cash flows with the revenue that they're expected to grow, they, they could have some decent returns here. The price is a little elevated right now. It appears that the market thinks that a situation, something in line with this is going to happen, but we'll have to see as they issue earnings. You can see some great growth in those revenues, double digit growth, cost of goods growing at a very similar rate. Uh, must be not quite because the margins have been getting better. Uh, gross profit, net profit, and EBITDA look Decent for 2022, 2023. I mean, 2022 is really what you expect to see. 2023 is good as well. It looks like they paid a whole lot in um, interest and taxes. 2020 and 2021 were clearly rough, though. Making decent revenues, but losing a lot of money. Balance sheet, you see the assets are trending down. We want those to be trending up. Don't like that they have negative tangible assets but they are on a trend towards the positive direction uh tangible book values decreasing as well very similar story with this chart well, cash flows are really good in 2021 have taken a dip since then and th that's why it's looking negative it'd be really nice to see them get back up to those levels if not even higher and then when we come to valuations, we see that the balance sheet is way up above everything else. Pretty flat, kind of on a downtrend. They are selling off some of their assets, it seems, or they're just losing value. Uh, share price is the second. It's kind of outpaced everything else value-wise since 2022, kind of elevated at the moment. Fair value bounced up in 2022, was on a nice trend until then, uh, came back down this last year, and if they can come in with our thesis going forward, it'll be looking a bit better. And earnings, they went positive recently. Analysts have at least some pretty good growth projected going forward, and the cash flows uh, we looked at the chart, it looks very similar here, a peak, and then they've been pretty flat since then. So I do want to watch it, but I don't think that it's going to be something that I'm going to be buying in the next year or so. Uh, there's quite a few things that they need to change before I would consider purchasing the stock. So with that, I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like if you enjoyed the video, comment what other stocks we should look at, and subscribe so you can stay up to date with everything. And I'll catch you next time.